You're about to hear our midweek leadership talk. And really, we're doing this just to inspire you to be the leader and the influencer that we know God has called you to be. So check this out. Thank y'all so much. Hey, I'm so honored to be here, y'all. Shoreline City, this, we are literally a part of the best church that is on the globe. I'm convinced of that. And this is insane. I'm so, so humbled to be here. Um, every single leader who's listening, our pastors, this church is so grateful and thankful for you. Um, keep loving hard, keep serving big. Um, we get to be here. This is incredible. Um, I want to start just by honoring our incredible pastors. We literally are not just a part of the best church in the world, but we're, we are literally led by the best leaders in the world as well. Um, those of you guys who've known them for a long time, you know that before they even get on any platform, the, pl the platform of their family, mm -hmm. the platform yep. of a husband and a wife yep. has preached to us even before they yeah. get on that platform. Exactly. So I'm just so appreciative. Yep. Yep. It's incredible that I even get to be here and I'm yep. honored that I get to even share something. Just lie to me if oh, you don't right. get anything out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just so <laughs> man, I want to really start by just sharing that um, I think in ministry, one of the coolest things that we have the opportunity to experience is this God moment when you, are, you find yourself in a situation, guys, and you see yourself in a situation. There's a lot of questions. You don't know why you're there, but then you just see God's purpose in it, yeah. okay? Yeah. It reminds me of a time when um, one of our pastors, actually I'm looking at him right now, um, was uh, taking an Uber and a Lyft, and um, he took this Uber, and he literally, his Uber driver, was at a place where he wanted to share that he's been trying to turn his life around. Um, you know, owing to Andrew's love for people and how welcoming he can be, this Uber driver shared that. And um, Andrew was like, Bet, we got, we got the best church in the world to go to. Um, and it's just a moment where you're just like, no, that wasn't just an Uber ride yeah. for Pastor Andrew. Yeah. That was something God was doing. Yeah. There was purpose there. Yeah. And I think God has a way of putting purpose right next to problems, okay? okay. So um, right. in Acts 8, I'm reminded of, and you guys have heard of Huddle that was based on this exact same story. This is Philip the evangelist, not to be confused with the apostle. Philip was chosen as the church was growing and as the demands were there, as widows actually needed more help in the household, they chose seven to help carry more weight. Philip was one of those seven chosen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in Acts 8, chapter or verses 26, you hear about Philip mm -hmm. being in one of those God moments, mm -hmm. being in one of those moments where purpose is put right next to a problem, Come okay? On. So I'm going to read it first, and then we're going to dive in. Awesome. Good. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. Yeah. And he arose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. Yeah. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, do you understand what you're reading? Yeah. And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? Wow. Hmm. And then... He invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep that was led to the slaughter and like a lamb before its shears is silent, so he opens his mouth not. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this generation? For this life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, about whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about somebody else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. You guys know the rest that the Ethiopian, as they're driving honestly on a desert road, yeah. they find yeah. water yeah. Yeah. and the Ethiopian asks, hey, what keeps me from getting baptized? Yeah. Yeah. They get baptized that day. Yeah. Okay, what I love and what I see in this, what I see in this yeah. is that we have got to continue to be leaders yes. that one, stand on the side of the road. Uh -huh. oh, that's so good. That's we so have good. got to stand on the side of the road. Why? Because the road is the pathway where problems are coming. Mm. 
The ro and I don't mean problems like the people. I just mean we're broken. Yeah. Sin has left yeah. a legacy. Yeah. And so there are problems in yeah. people's lives. So and good. they are going to be walking on a road and we get to meet yes. them. Okay? So those God moments where you're like, why? Well, I don't know why I'm here. Why am I being asked to stand on the road? I feel like Philip would have asked that question because that would have been the tension. Why is the angel asking me to stand on the side of the road? Oh, wait, something's coming? Okay, what is it? A chariot with an Ethiopian. Okay, a person is coming. That matters to God. I don't know what else is about to go down, but this Ethiopian eunuch is coming in a chariot and guess what is about to go down now? You're going to stand close enough yeah. because the Spirit says, go over to the chariot. Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to obey and stand close enough to hear the problem that this Ethiopian, that this person has. And this problem is, is so he's good. reading yes. one of the most incredible scriptures. Yes. There is not another prophet in the scriptures that speaks about Jesus like Isaiah. Wow. It's right there. It's the bullseye. And he happens to be reading about Jesus. Yeah. Philip is like, hold up. I know you didn't do it like this, God, because if, you, <laughs> if, if you're going to set it up like this, yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't even need to have all yeah. the questions answered. So Standing close enough to hear him. Do you even know what you're reading? Wow. Something tells wow. me you don't. Yeah. Something tells me you don't. Whoa. And so then what happens? What happens is he says that because he's bold enough to say that. He's loving enough to say that. Just like Andrew, who's loving enough to ask an Uber driver about his life. Yeah, yeah. And then he offers this peace to him. And he's like, hey, so who about, how can I? How can I know? How can I know unless somebody tells me, unless somebody guides me? Then he invites him up. Yeah. Thank God, Philip. Yes. wants to get in. That's right. That's <laughs> Thank so God Philip good. is yeah. so on purpose that yeah. he's like, if you're reading about Jesus and you don't know, this is my job. So Matter of fact, I'm an evangelist. So if this church is not a church that is supposed to share yes. Jesus with everybody, yes. so not good. just the ones who walk in this church, but those who are on the side of every road, yes. whether that's work, whether that is church, yep. what, every Come facet on, of your that's life, right. yeah, that's yeah. so good. come in. Philip starts right where he leaves yes. off. Yes. Yes. How many of us know that people are walking in with problems, whether that's, that's exactly a right. broken marriage, right. yeah, yeah. whether that be broken relationships, yes. whether okay. that be feeling like they've been unloved yeah. for as yes. long as life has happened, yeah. whether that be, man, I was abused in my past, man, I was hurt by the church, and we get okay. to start right where oh. they leave yeah. off. Philip doesn't have to do much more work That's than exactly say, give right. me the book you're reading <laughs> and I'll finish this off for you. As a church, guys, yes. we get to be leaders that yeah. say, we don't care where you are yes. because we're actually going to so start good, right where yes. you're leaving off. Yes. If you don't want to be in church anymore because your last church hurt you, let me start yeah. right where you're leaving off. If you think your marriage is over because you guys just keep fighting every single night, we are going to start right where you left off. The last fight y'all had is where we're going to start. And we're going to move into that and lean into that as a church who loves, guys. I love this. So he invites Philip up. How can I unless someone can guide me? That, my friends, is the problem that we get to see. That's the problem. He's reading about Jesus, but doesn't understand yeah. who Jesus yeah. is. Yeah. A lot of theologians have different theories about why that might be the case. One might be the fact that he's a eunuch, and way back when, before Jesus came, eunuchs were considered unclean. Mm. Eunuchs were considered uh, people that should be cast to the side. I don't know what that looks like for us in our church, but maybe that's the homeless person. Maybe that's the person who's not so cool. Maybe that's the person who's been divorced that, that shouldn't be here. What? Who said that? Exactly. Who said that? Not this church. Not this church. He's invited up because Philip is willing to listen to a problem. He hears the problem. He hears the problem. And Philip has the solution we all have. And that is always going to be Jesus. Come on. And so he tells him about Jesus. 
And Philip then wants Woo. to lead this guy in a baptism so because he's asking for it, guys. Yeah. So as a church, I want us to be reminded. Yes. I want us to be reminded Same. that God puts purpose yes. right yes. next to exactly problems. Right. Yeah. When you're in your coffee shop, guys, mm. yeah. and you happen to sit next to somebody that you maybe open up a conversation with mm. and you find yourself in a moment when they're talking about the fact that their life okay. is at a place they just don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. But they're open enough with you to share that? Do you hear the person saying, how can I unless somebody guides me? How can I do life unless somebody helps me? Do you hear them saying that? Do you hear them saying, how, who is this? Is he speaking about himself or is he speaking about somebody else? Is this the Jesus that allows me, a eunuch, to be included? Because I actually can't be included because I'm a eunuch and that they wouldn't even allow me to come to the assemblies. Is this a church that will allow me to be in? Yeah. Indeed, that's why we're talking to you. That's why we're right here in front of you guys. What does a problem look like? What does a problem look like? This is for us leaders. This is for us doing ministry. What does a problem look like as we, one, stand on the side of the road, two, get close enough to yes. listen and to hear, ask the compassionate but bold question, do you know what you're reading? Do you know what life you've determined for yourself at this point? Do you know that God has more for you? So good. And then you open your mouth and start right where they left off. You know what the okay. question they may ask that represents a problem? What it might sound like, guys? I just want to serve this so I don't miss anybody. I don't want to miss anybody. Did you just ask, were you able to make friends? Are you able to make friends in a new town because you just moved here? Did I hear you just say, nothing else is working to fix the problem that I have? Did I hear you just say, you don't have a church to go to in Dallas? <laughs> Did I hear you just say, what marriage should I even look up to? Because all I see are marriages that are broken. Did I hear you just say, you look happy on the outside, but deep down you're suffering? Yes. Did I hear you just say, you have a drug problem and you want to beat it, but nothing has worked? Did I hear you just say, you have a suicidal problem? You have suicidal thoughts. Wow. Did I hear you just say you've never felt like you've mattered to anyone in your entire life? Come on. Did I hear you just say you don't know how to trust anyone because something happened to you in your past and you can't forgive them? Did I hear you just say you feel like people don't know the real you? And if they did, they still wouldn't stand with you. Did I hear you just say you stopped going to church? because someone in your family passed away and it's hard to trust God. Yeah. For us leaders, did I hear you just say, you don't know exactly what tithing is? Mm. Mm. Come on. So good. Did I hear you just say, you, you think that fasting is showing how disciplined and strong you might be? Oh. Did I hear you just say, you love disciplining or you love being discipled by others, but you're not too comfortable being discipled yourself mm. so or being good. corrected yourself? This is so good, Daniel. Did I hear you just say, I don't know what my giftings are? Yeah. Did I hear you just say, you don't know why you've been invited to this table? Yeah. So good. As leaders, y'all, we've got to hear the real question, yes. which is, yeah. Yeah. how can I unless somebody guides me? Wow. Wow. And in that yeah. moment, you realize you're on the chessboard and you yeah. get to be a piece, guys. You get to be a piece. Thank so you good. so much, church. Yeah. Shoreline so City, good. we get to play a role in this. Love you guys so much. Leaders, you're incredible. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you.